Hello everybody, this is Ty Warner with Tyka Engineering and Gleason, Kiss Soft, Tech Support. I want to talk about coaxial shafts and connecting them with splines or other types of connectors and kisses. So let's say we have a three shaft system and we're going to connect two of those shafts via, you know, end to end. They're going to be coaxial and there'll be some type of a coupler in between there. So I'm, I'm going to simply turn on my administrator privilege. I'm in KISS SIS 2022 and I'm going to uh, add the group box. So this is our top level gear box. Okay, you see it comes up in the diagram. And then I'm going to add a gear shaft, shaft one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and activate default geometry so you can see it build in the back. So here's my shaft one. On that shaft I'm going to add two bearings, roller bearing one and roller bearing two and I'm going to add a gear Z1. So here's my shaft right now. I also need to add a coupler. I'm going to call this input and I'm going to add a a kiss off shaft calculation. Okay, so shaft one. Now I'm going to have another shaft that connects these gears. There'll be a gear uh, that connects on here, and then there's going to be another shaft out here that's connected uh, via a spline coupler. Okay, so what that might look like then is uh, I want to hold those coaxial because they're going to be in line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in this group box right here, I'm going to add a folder and I'm going to call this um, coaxial shafts. All right. Now these coaxial shafts, they're going to be online, so uh, simply I'm going to put a, a single shaft in here, shaft two. This shaft is going to have two bearings uh, and a gear. So Z2 for my gear, bearing one, bearing three in this case, one, two, three. Um, bearing four. Okay. And then I'm going to also add another shaft which is going to connect to this shaft two. We're going to call this shaft three. Okay. And we're going to put two bearings on that. Uh, along. You know, I don't need that gear though. We're just going to delete that. I meant to grab bearings. We're going to put two bearings on it. One two okay and then we're going to put a coupling on it to be our output like so all right we see that our shafts are not lined up at all like we think they should be but that's all right uh, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this coaxial shaft and I'm gonna add a coaxial shaft calculation okay I need to connect Z1 and Z2 together. So I highlight my group box. I go to coupling. Kiss this constraint. Uh, I'm new gear pair constraint. I'm just going to call it constraint 1. Z1, this gear here. And Z2, this gear here. Get back on there. And I'm just going to leave it at 1 for efficiency. And now those two are connected. See that? So I have shaft 1 shaft 2 and then I have this other shaft here that's supposed to we go try and connect that. So on my input here on my top level this is my my uh, my top level folder right here I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put in my boundary conditions. So for my input okay I'm gonna add my in put coupling. That's this one right here. I'm going to constrain it and maybe I give it like 0.7 newton meters. Okay. And you can see I got power flow coming in here. And then I'm going to add my output. Okay. 
Now that's going to be my output. You see it's black. There's nothing, there's no power coming through here because we haven't defined how we're going to connect shaft 2 and shaft 3. So there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, one way I would do this if I was going to use splines is I need to add in my coaxial shafts, I need to add a connecting element. We'll just call it connection 1. And the inner shaft we're going to call a shaft 2. We'll say that that's an, in, that's an external spline. And the outer shaft will be shaft 3. That'll be an internal spline. And it's going to be fixed. So this is coupling these shafts together. And when I say OK, it shows up over here. And now I've got this, this coupling that connects the shafts right here. And if I run this kinematics. Now you can see my power flow. Everything calculates and my power flow comes through here. Okay. What does this look like? If you go to coaxial shafts, you double click and open that. We can see I've got shaft 2 right here. And I've got shaft 3 right here. Okay. And I have an in, uh, for shaft 3 I have an in, internal cylindrical bore here. All right, so we're going to kind of change this around just a little bit. Um, let's kind of fatten this up. We'll make it, let's make this metric, and we'll make this 35 millimeters. Okay, we'll size, just highlight that bearing, and you can hit this sizing button, and it'll size the bearing for you. And then you can grab a bigger one if you want. Um, let's see, what do we like? Any of these bearings would probably work just fine. There's a bearing. Okay. Highlight shaft 3, and I'm just going to move this out of the way of shaft 2 for now. You can highlight this, and then just move it like that. Notice my coupling here now between the two shafts. If I want to move that, I have to go to movable forces and supports. Turn this on. And now I can move this over here, because I think I'll be over here somewhere and I can grab and move elements around at this point. So I'm going to size this bearing and I think it's a 6007. That works fine. Um, now I'm saying that I want to put a spline on here and the reason I would put a spline in this particular module is so I could look at notch factors and bending and see if I've got fatigue or stuff like that. So I'm going to right click, add a spline. Uh, maybe that spline is, maybe it's 30 millimeters long. 0.330. And maybe I'm going to position that, uh, you know, maybe out here at at uh, 90 at the end of this, okay, because this is where I'm going to connect this other output shaft. And then the other thing I need to do in this spline is I need to define the number of teeth and the module, the tip diameter, the root diameter, or I can go right here and I can grab one of these standards. So let's say I grab a, a flat root side, 30 degree fit, and I'm looking for a I'm going to make this millimeters. I can sort this. So I'm looking for a 30 millimeter spline. So I've got some of these right here. 37, 18 teeth. This is a little coarser. This is 1632. So maybe I grab this one right here. And now it automatically <coughs> populates my spline with that tooth. Okay. Even though I'm at 30, oh, it should be 35. Let's go, let's get the right one then. We can grab one of these. There. Okay. Uh, and if I wanted to, I could always come back and step this down, whatever. So I have this, this external spline. This needs to be 35 millimeters. 
I cannot do an internal spline on this shaft. We just, you can't do it. Um, so the in internals are, I guess I'm going to call it kind of dumb. Um, you know, we can't do a, an internal spline on that. But we can definitely do this spline. And if you wanted to do two of these splines lined up, then you'd have a third shaft up here and you'd connect both of them through those splines. So there's that option. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and, and I'm going to insert another cylinder back here. Let's say it necks down a little bit and goes somewhere. And let's say that, um, you know, it's coupled out here some, somewhere. I can size these bearings like this. Uh, I would never normally do a double supported bearing. I would normally do, I wouldn't say never, but I normally just support it like this. Oops, get over there. All right, and then here's my coupler. We can make that whatever you want. You know. There. <clears throat> So here's my output coupler, here's my gear. Uh, I'm gonna set these with supported on left and support on the right. I'm gonna highlight my shaft three here and I'm gonna slide this over and now you can see um, I have an interface right here with a fixed rotation. It's allowed to tilt if you don't like using these, you can always click on this Cartesian and you can see exactly everything is fixed. Okay. So maybe there's some radial displacement uh, with clearance. Maybe that clearance is 20 microns. And then it'd be fixed in the Y direction. Uh, it's fixed with rotation. So this is connecting the two shafts. And if I run this, it gives me some information here. Shaft three, there's no side loads, but here, let's do this. For shaft three, since I don't wanna see those, and maybe there is some loading in here, we can we can go down to forces, right click, add a centrical load, and then we're just gonna slide that over here, and we're gonna make it um, X and Z. So in the Z direction, we're gonna go negative, 50 newtons, okay? Now if I run this, boy, that's not very much load, but that's okay. So the bearings are gonna last forever, basically. There's not enough load here to really do anything. But the bigger thing here is you've got this connection now, right here, that puts these two shafts together and if you had another gear out here driving another gear train, you'd be able to define all that stuff. Okay. Maybe that's a little bit wider, I don't know. But this is how you would connect two shafts in KISSIS or KISSOFT if you're just using this module. Um, and now when you go back to the, and I hit refresh, you can either refresh here or you can do the whole calculation if I just refresh here. Now I can see I've got my bearings, I got my... Something's going on with my gears there. I'm not sure why that would have moved, but um, let's go ahead and put a, a gear calculation in right here. And then let's, there, see that brought it <clears throat> up to zero. Now if we just double click and open it, we can look at this, uh, it's a 2424, let's make it a 50. Well, that's 50 by 50, and it's going to give me a, f I got to size this center distance right here, okay, runs, you know, a whole bunch of stuff on here because it's just the start. So here's my gears, all right, my center distance, um, all the information here. This is all based off the information we put initially in this uh, KISSIS model. There, there's my gears, and now if I want to see what that looks like, I can hit this 3D graphics and go to solid elements and say okay. 
there now I've got some some graphics I know which direction things are spinning my red um, input and output I have my power flow and this uh, rough little system is now designed I took you know roughly 15 minutes uh, mostly because I was explaining it so if you get really good at this you can do it pretty quick now if you go up here into this graphics editor if you say you want to look at the cut view and you say yes you'll be able to see that this shaft is indeed on each other here so it's coupled in here the spline you're not going to see here because it's a general graphics window it's not going to show you the spline in all its detail <clears throat> that you'd have to if you wanted to do a complete spline calculation you'd have to do that in in Kisoft in the blue one here <clears throat> you can you can connect in here and you pull some of those loads out but you would do that spline calculation oh, where's my spline rolling shaft plane connections right here spline and geometry and then you can <clears throat> you can put the the length of the the spline and the hub and all that so <clears throat> this this uh, this is how you would connect shafts together and you can do this if you don't do the coaxial shafts but you're gonna have to position the 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 connection on one of those shafts and then set the other one up and you have to it's a lot more work this is really the best way to do it it's, it's the easiest way at least I think so good luck hopefully this helps you uh, just a quick tip for today thanks talk to you later